Hey everyone! Today we're going to be talking about Far Out, the major navigational app on the trail. Far Out sells guides to the three long distance hikes in America, the Pacific Crest Trail, Appalachian Trail, and Continental Divide Trail. Now these do come at a cost, but it is totally worth it in my opinion. You can buy these guides as a whole bundle, or you can buy them in small sections if you would like. Uh, so for example, like the Appalachian Trail, you could buy state by state. Otherwise, like I said, you could buy as a bundle. Now, what makes Far Out such a great app? Um, so one thing is navigation. Um, so it will show you the trail, where you are on trail, um, but along with that, it has these things called waypoints. Now, waypoints are these small icons that will show you where different things are on trail. That being like water, towns, uh, shelters, tenting, all of that kind of stuff. And they're updated by the Far Out team. Now, what makes these waypoints so cool is that other hikers can comment on those things. So you're getting real updated information while you're on the trail. So a lot of crowdsourcing happening through this app. Um, so not only is it navigation, but it is a way to communicate. Um, so we're gonna take a look at Far Out, how to download it and some of the basics of how to use Far Out. Um, keep in mind, I have an Android, so my platform of Far Out might look a little bit different if you have an Apple phone, um, but I'm going to switch over to showing you on my phone how to start uh, using Far Out and navigating through it. So let's switch over. Okay, so once you have downloaded the Far Out app and have made an account, you can start purchasing the guides that you would like to have. So you can either do that here using the search bar. You can search for the different guide that you would like. Otherwise, if you come to the top right corner, these four boxes, uh, you can also search for the guides here. I have already purchased the Appalachian Trail and Pacific Crest Trail. Um, we're going to look at the Appalachian Trail. So I had purchased mine as a whole bundle. So um, underneath each section of the trail, you'll see that it says purchase. So I have access to all of those. If you only purchase certain sections of the trail, um, only those would be available for you um, to download and look at. Um, so I am going to go to our Georgia through Great Smoky Mountain section. And when I click open here, it is going to show us that viewpoint from the map. So it shows that section here on the map. Now to actually download that section, we're gonna come to the top left, those three lines, and go to our download manager. And this is where it's gonna show you the Georgia through Smoky Mountain um, portion. Now you have a couple of different options of things that you can download. Um, so waypoint photos, that would be any of those little icons like the water icons, the shelters, or the tents. Uh, sometimes they have photos that go along with it. Other hikers have posted photos of what the water source looks like or what the tenting looks like. I personally like sometimes having those photos, um, but that's up to you if you want to have them on there. The other thing that you can do is get different versions of the maps. So you can have like a topographic view or a satellite view. Uh, again, it just gives you a couple of different variations of the maps, and you can toggle between them when you have the map open. Um, again, sometimes can be useful to have different versions, but not something that you have to do. Um, and then at the very bottom, there is a line that says check for updates. And sometimes that can be useful to check, um, especially when you're in towns, just to make sure that Far Out is updating I have my profile set to automatically update when uh, it gets service, but it can also be useful just to check here too, just to make sure that it's prompting far out to update. 
So any of these that you want to download, you'll just click the downward button and it'll start downloading those items. And then if you don't want them downloaded, you can hit the trash button and it will undownload them. So we're going to go back to our map view. Um, looking here, so again, it gives you the map view of this section of trail. Um, a couple of different features on here. So if we go down to the right bottom hand corner, there is a tool icon. If we click on this, this is where um, we have a settings where you can adjust that map type. So if you wanted to go into satellite view or the topographic view or something like that, that's where you could do that. And to have access to these maps, um, the map in general, and then the other versions of the maps, you have to make sure that you download them. Um, so when you're offline, you still have access to them. Another feature is you can share your location. You can also go to a specific mile point on the trail. Um, so if we wanted to go to like mile one and then press OK, it would zoom us in there. You can add custom waypoints. Um, so what this means is that you can add uh, those little icons on your own map. Now it's only viewable to you, but you could add in a water source or a hostel or grocery store that you might know of. Um, and you might be thinking, what's the benefit of doing this? And how would you even know that these things are out there? Um, so somebody who I had through hiked with on the PCT uh, had already done the PCT a couple years prior. So he had marked waypoints on his first hike of different water sources. And so he found it useful going back on his second time that he had some waypoints that he already had marked. Um, now you could even add these before your hike if you knew that there were tenting sites or shelters or something like that that is not on far out that you know about and you want to make sure that you remember you could always add in a custom waypoint if you would like. The next really cool thing is that you can plan a route. Now this is exactly what it sounds like. Um, you will pick uh, at least two places on the map, if not more, if you would like, and it will plan a route for you. So it will tell you what the mileage is, what the ascent, what the descent is. And this can be really useful when you're looking at resupplying or just trying to get a forecast of what your next couple days are going to be. Um, so I'll kind of walk you through that process. So to plan a route, you'll again want to pick at least two points on the map. So we're going to start off at this first junction. Um, so it has pinned that there. And then the second place, um, so here it'll show you there's about 5.9 miles in between those two things, the total ascent, the total descent of it. Um, if I wanted to, I could add in a third marker um, and it would give you what the whole trip would be. Now, if we wanted to save this route, we could come up to the top here where the check mark is and you can save it. You give it a name, you could give it a description and then say okay, and it'll save that planned route. So you can see it on here highlighted on your map, but if you didn't want that to be highlighted on your map, uh, view your planned routes, um, and then you could toggle that off. That way it wouldn't show anymore. Again, really useful if you're trying to plan out your route for the next couple of days or in between resupplies. Um, and this will be something I'll go into more detail in the uh, resupplying video. So next couple of things on this tool icon. Um, so you can create a location check-in, and I'll go into more detail about that further on in this video. Um, but you can basically add little check-ins of where you're at. This is something I typically would do in the evening time when I was... Um, at a specific tenting location, and it would mark then uh, kind of my trail of where I've been. 
Um, so now we're going to look at the waypoints. So the waypoints are those little icons you can see all across here. When you zoom in, they do spread out more and show you where they are on trail. And each of these different waypoints mean a different thing. Um, and there is a guide or definition book in the Far Out app, which we'll go into a little bit later into this video, that will tell you what each of these emblems mean. So I'm going to look for a water source over here. So you click on that, it'll show you um, the mile that it is located at. And right now I am not on trail, but if I was on trail, it would tell me how far away I was from that specific item. It will also tell you where the next source of that similar item is. So for water, um, it's gonna tell you where the next water source is in relation to either behind you or in front of you. So at this small stream, you can see that the previous water source was 0.6 behind you, and then the next water source is 0.6 in front of you. And then sometimes far out, we'll have little descriptions about these items. Um, you'll see more descriptions when you're going into towns or something like that of what the town has accessible to. Um, and those are descriptions that are made by the Far Out team. Now, if we come to the comment section over here, this is where we can see what other hikers have been seeing. So in relation to the water, this can be really useful if you're trying to see if a water source is still viable. Um, so it's nice, it gives you also the date that somebody has posted, so you can know if it was posted a day prior to you, it probably still is okay. But if it was posted a week ago um, that somebody commented, it could be a little bit iffy. Um, and then something to keep in mind too, when you're looking at these waypoints, Sometimes, like shelters, they might not display on that icon that it is water, but they might actually have water there or other sources there like tenting or things like that. Um, so it's important to look at all of the different icons that are there because sometimes there could be other things that are hidden beneath them. And again, you can look at the comments then. And sometimes people like this person wrote a massive comment about stuff and it can be really useful, especially for the shelters or tenting, um, saying how many spots are there, if there has been an animal that's been frequenting there, um, all different sorts of stuff. Okay. So next, um, we're going to look at the different viewpoints that you can have of the map. So here you can see that you can see like the whole map on an actual physical map. Um, but if you wanted to look at an elevation profile, you could come up here. So to the top right, there's a little mountain emblem. And if we click that, it will show you the elevation profile. And you can set these to different scales at the bottom. So if we wanted to zoom in a little bit, um, that way we could see it mile by mile. And this will show you the elevation profile of what you're going up. And then when you're actually on the trail, it'll mark yourself on the trail as a little blue bubble. Again, I'm not on trail, so it's not going to show me there. Um, but that way you can see where you are in relation to uh, the rest of the elevation. Now, if we wanted to go back to the map view, we would just click up here again at the right top. Now, another way to do that same thing is to go up to your left-hand side, um, the three lines. We're going to go to our main menu. So you can toggle in between a map view, which is what we're on right now, um, the elevation profile, and then you could switch between something called a list view. 
So the list view is going to tell you um, all of the different waypoints that are there. Um, and you can then click on a waypoint that you would like to see. So let's say water. And it will show you where you are in relation to um, the other water sources that are there. And then just like I said previously, sometimes you'll see like these shelter icons. Um, and those sometimes will have water there. So that's why that's populating. But that way you can see where each mile source is or each water source or whatever waypoint is at each mile and where you are in relation to it, but in a list view. Now we already discussed the downloading. Um, next thing is the social feed. So going into that, so you can, in your profile, follow other hikers or even have other people following you. And something really cool about this is that you can have friends or family that can make a free far out account and they can follow you and you can follow them. And then you can do this other thing where you can send a check-in. So this is what I was talking about earlier where I would typically send a check-in maybe once a day in the evening time around the campsite. Um, and this is where you can write a little message or you don't even have to write a message at all. But then it will send that location of where you're at out to your followers. Um, and this is only done if there is service. So if you do not have service at the time that you send this out, once you get service, it will automatically send that location out. Um, and then it's viewable to you. So that way you can kind of see where you have been um, over the course of your journey. And then the next thing, um, we're going to look at the settings. So here is where you'll really um, have more power to adjust what you want your far out to look like. Um, so the first thing is looking at the direction. So you can set yours to northbound or southbound, depending on which direction you're going. I was going no bow, so that's what mine is at. The direction arrows, um, I believe those will show you um, where your phone is or what direction you are um, on trail. It can be helpful. I'm not super great at direction, so I found it useful to have those on. Um, and then you can adjust some other things on your profile, um, the lighting of it, um, the different map types that you have. That's another way to adjust it here. Um, but again, make sure that you have those different maps downloaded while you have service so that you have them available when you're offline. So there's a different couple of things here that you can do. And the last thing I want to show you is the information page. So here, the waypoint icons, this will give you a definition list of what all of those different icons are. So if you're ever wondering what they are, come here and it will show you. But when you're on the map and you click on an icon, it will also tell you when you click on it. Um, and I believe that is most of the stuff to get you started on your far out guide.